So, you picked up Suicide Squad because you wanted to experience the joy of high flying all across a gigantic open world cityscape via high tech tomfoolery, but there's a problem. You don't know what the F you're doing. That's okay. One out of every four gamers has been tragically diagnosed with Ligma, lack of important gravity management abilities. Many, sadly, will never recover. But not you, because today we're going to start treatment with five tips on how to master movement in Suicide Squad, kill the Justice League, and thank you to WB Games for sponsoring today's video. Tip number one, master the basics. And that's just common sense, so why don't we start small? You've got your jump and you've got your double jump. You've also got your evade, which is pretty easy to just throw out a lot in close quarters combat. You've also got your slide, which you have to jump before doing, by the way. You can't just run into a slide. That would be crazy talk. You've got wall jumping, aka jumping out a wall, then jumping again when hitting it to bounce right off. And you've got wall climbing. Just keep holding the button down to zoom to the top of any building or structure you might be climbing unless the architecture gets kind of weird at the top. Now some stuff you might not know. You can chain sliding and gain decent momentum if you're on a downward slope. All you gotta do is hit jump, hit the slide button, then repeat. Again, try to find a nice long downward slope to really practice and get the hang of sliding around like Tom Cruise in Risky Business. Also, keep in mind that every time you hit the ground, you can hit the jump button again to re-jump back into the air and get slightly more height than you would from a regular jump when not moving at all. Also, also remember that landing on any surface will reset your traversal cooldown bar so you can do it all over again. That brings us to tip number two. Don't just learn one character. But Harley Quinn is hard to use. Look, man, you're gonna be like that one guy you know who only eats ham and cheese sandwiches every day for lunch with the crust cut off? Get the hell out of here with that. Treat this the way you should be treating your love life by spicing things up for the best results. Aside from being more fun, sometimes characters in Suicide Squad will get psyched up, meaning you'll have a limited time window where that character gets reduced bruises, boosted damage, recharged abilities, and gain, quote, Hell a lot more XP. If science has taught us nothing else, it's that hell a lot is far more than hell a little, and therefore you should learn to play every character to not miss out on psyched up opportunities. If you're trying to get a general idea of each character's movement entry level, I'm gonna put it like this. King Shark is my hard recommendation for players who might be a little intimidated by playing a game of citywide parkour. He's actually very straightforward in terms of movement and jumping. Your options are charge up a jump that goes very high or charge up a jump that goes very far. Did you catch all of that? Nine times out of ten, you're probably going to be using the one that goes very far. But again, it's easy to wrap your head around what Shark brings to the table. Remember that if you're in the air and you want to get out of the air with King Shark, all you got to do is hold down the same button you did for the high jump to rapidly increase the rate you descend back down to the ground. He also has three mid-air dashes that he can use to further extend movement in any direction. While a character like him is very straightforward, he can still be a lot of fun, and he's pretty damn good in close-range combat. It makes sense that most of the time you're just going to be jumping headlong into piles of alien dudes. At the other end of the spectrum, I'm probably going to put Harley Quinn. Harley's jump is IMO trickier for newer players to understand, but damn rewarding if you put in some time to stick with her and figure things out. She's got the grappling hook and the stolen Batman glider swing, and my biggest recommendation if you're trying to figure out Harley is to really learn the overshoot mechanic, which happens when you're grappling up a building or a structure and you have a short window to launch yourself past it and keep your momentum going. Also, if you hit the button to descend down quicker, you'll actually rapidly speed up the cooldown of your glider swing charge. Biggest tip for new Harley players, the glider swing is fun, but prioritize the vertical grapple, which has surprising range and more opportunities to activate than you would expect. Tip number three, chain attacks with movement. A lot of players out there might get so distracted with movement that their flow chart might 100% end up looking like this. And there ain't nothing wrong with that, but you don't always have to stop if you don't want to. There are plenty of opportunities to attack while moving, shooting enemies from midair, then continuing to parkour out, dropping grenades on enemies from midair, and even your traversal attack, which is unique to each character. King Shark can basically cannonball down from above and slam into the ground. Harley Quinn can only use her traversal attack up close if enemies are nearby, but it deals very fast and respectable damage. Deadshot has Fuel Dump, which throws out heavy area damage directly in front of him. And Captain Boomerang will throw his boomerang at multiple targets near him and run around using the speed force to damage each one repeatedly. Don't forget that transversal attacks can be buffed 
buffed through a bunch of different talents on your skill tree as well as mods that you can buy directly from your favorite flabby flightless bird over at the Hall of Justice. And don't be afraid to just mess around and do dumb stuff. Harley Quinn can straight up dangle from her drone and shoot enemies while swinging back and forth like a deranged Miley Cyrus and then go right back to transversing. Tip number four, playing default settings is for chumps. And you're not a chump, are you? Don't answer that. Start off with camera distance in the settings. The lower the number, the closer the camera is to your character. Now you might like that, but I prefer cranking it up to five. That way the camera pulls back further and you can take in more of your surroundings, meaning you can now see more buildings around you to better plan where to move next or where to shoot next. Same thing with your FOV slider. I recommend you crank that ish up to a higher number, again, to widen your in-game peripheral and be able to take in more visually and feel less confined. Other stuff you can fiddle with if you feel like it might help you be better with your citywide game of parkour. You can turn traversal camera auto follow off if you feel that it helps you be more free with your movements. And if you're a sit far back from the screen and chill kind of gamer, you might want to also turn on larger persistent center dot, which just makes the dot in the center of your screen a little bit beefier and easier to see. You can also adjust your camera shakedown and straight up turn motion blur off, which is what I do. But the point is you do whatever you feel is going to make you feel more fluid in the air, on the ground and in combat. Play this game like you play your life. Don't settle for default. I think Confucius may have said that. Finally, tip number five, pass on fast travel. Oh sure, you can unlock the ability to fast travel around the map, but come on, look at this big wide open city. There's so much room to swing and jump and fly. Why miss out on all of that? The more you practice your movement, the better you'll get right off the bat. And that's what you want. Freaking wanting to fast travel in a game where you can basically fly across rooftops. What's next? Complaining you can't ride the subway? If you've got extra movement tips, hit me with them down in the comment section. And again, big thank you to WB Games for sponsoring today's video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.